Hello adventurers, my name is Chance, welcome to my spellbook and thank you so much for tuning into the 29th episode of our background series. Today I have a real painful memory in store for all of you. So if you weren't playing D&D when Wayfinder's Guide to Eberron was released, or if you weren't particularly involved in any forums back then, You'll kind of know probably already what I'm talking about here, but in case you don't, when Wayfinder's Guide to Eberron was kind of being teased out, uh, there was um, a lot that it was supposed to have with it, um, namely a, a, an extra dozen backgrounds or so, and I was super pumped up about that, and so were a lot of other people who are really fascinated with the lore of Eberron. So there was like a lot of a lot of fan theories, a lot of like homebrew ideas for what these backgrounds might be as they relate to the individual houses, all that good stuff. And a lot of them were like really interesting, and I am thoroughly out of the loop when it comes to Eberron lore. Um, but a lot of people who play um, kind of the online Dungeons and Dragons game, they were really really passionate about it. In any case, when this book was released. I felt thoroughly disappointed, uh, at least in relation to the backgrounds. Um, I was probably less morally affected or less emotionally affected um, than a lot of the other people that I was chatting with, because it, I don't know, there was a lot they could have done that they didn't do, uh, speaking about Wizards of the Coast. But whatever, it is what it is. Um, so I'm going to blank it. All of the 13 house agent backgrounds into one video. Why can I do that, you may ask? Because they're all basically the same thing. Uh, the only real differences between them, um, at least as so far as the raw mechanics, is the tool proficiencies are a little bit different between each of the houses. And you know what? I can just go over that in a pinned comment. That's how sad they, I don't know. Once again, I was just disappointed, but there were a lot of people I spoke with who were genuinely upset about, well, it's something that they're passionate about that ended up really amounting to nothing. So all their time spent theorizing and fan crafting was not really rewarded to any capacity. Like even looking at the list, like I can see why Wizards of the Coast made them all separate. But it just left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouth. In any case, I'm gonna stop talking about that. I'm just gonna call them all the house agent. Let's move on to the description, which is universal. God damn. You have sworn fealty to a dragon marked house. If you have a dragon mark, you're likely a member of one of the house's influential families. Otherwise, you're an outsider who hopes to make your fortune in the house. And they provide a nice little D8 table to what you might be. Um, feel free to roll it, come up with your own, whatever. Just speak with your DM about it and they'll hopefully provide you with some guidance. Now let's move on to the mechanics here. The skill proficiencies are universal amongst the houses. Uh, you gain investigation and persuasion, which are perfectly fine skills. Uh, under tool proficiencies, this one is for House Caneth. Um, you gain access to alchemist supplies and tinkerer's tools, which are really good and arguably some of my favorite tools in the game. And under equipment, you gain a set of fine clothes, a house signet ring, identification papers, and a purse containing 20 gold piece, which is double the average, which is really nice. Taking a glance at the mechanics overall, they're fine, you know, they're, they're pretty good, arguably one of the stronger set of mechanics we've had. If you're curious what the individual houses have for their tool proficiencies, just check out the pinned comment when I get around to making it, which should be relatively soon, and that'll have all the information you need in there. Now let's take a look at the feature. Um, this one is called House Connections, and it's the same for all of the backgrounds. As an agent of your house, you can always get food and lodging for yourself and your friends at a house enclave. When the house assigns you a mission, it will usually provide you with the necessary supplies and transportation. Beyond this, you have many old friends, mentors, and rivals in your house, and you may encounter one of them when you interact with a house business. 
The degree to which acquaintances are willing to help you depends on your current standing in your house. Which makes sense. This is a fine feature overall. I have zero complaints about it. Uh, provides you with lodging and food out of the gate, which is really nice. Also provides you with supplies and transportation, which is great. And in addition to that, you get some uh, backing in the form of the other members of the guild, or house rather, um, that are willing to help you based on your standing within the house. It's really good stuff, doesn't really rule out any options such as combat, which is super great, making it one of the stronger features we've encountered so far. Although, it is worth speaking with your DM about, just because a lot of it's themed towards your local house, right? So, you might want to make it so in your game world the houses are widespread and exist in most major cities, or something to that effect, just to make sure it's always a relevant feature. Now let's move on to some suggested characteristics here. For the personality trait, I am always looking to improve efficiency. Under ideal, innovation, abandoning old traditions and finding a better way to do things. And this will take you more towards the chaotic direction. Under bond, my host must evolve and I'll lead the evolution. And under flaw, my secret could get me expelled from my house. I really like this overall because it kind of tells a story, right? You're looking to improve things, make them better. It just overall push your house into the future where you think it needs to be. However, your ideals might conflict directly with the current ruling party or maybe even the house in general. So if anyone else figures out that you have this almost rebellious in inhibition, they're likely to punish you for it and boot you from the house because who needs that much chaos. That being said, your DM might have another uh, secret for you or you might have another idea yourself. That being said, it's pretty good. I like it. Leads to some interesting plot hooks and leads to some interesting character interactions for sure. Now let's get to my personal thoughts on it. If you can't tell by what I said in the beginning, the house agents as a whole, I'm just disappointed with. Not because of them as individuals, because that's a different story. But just in a general sense, I don't like what Wizards of the Coast did. However, if I'm looking at the house agent as a background objectively, it's quite good. Um, individual mileage may vary based on the tool proficiencies you have, but overall they're all quite strong. Investigation and persuasion are great skills to be proficient in. Tool proficiencies are always just nice in general. The equipment's kind of meh, but you do gain almost essentially double the average gold, which is great. The feature, if it's workshopped properly, is top tier. And the suggested characteristics are relatively interesting in of themselves. Would I recommend a buying Wayfinder's Guide to Eberron? Uh... Depends on how much you like the setting, I guess. There are a lot of people who are really obsessed with Eberron, and with good reason to be, there's a lot of lore there. But that being said, if you're familiar with all the lore, is getting the book going to provide anything new? I don't know, kind of depends on you, I guess, and what you already know. I have it, I like it, I've used it a handful of times, but to a player who's not planning on DMing a whole lot, I don't know, there are other ways to gain access to the player-based information within that book, one of which is this channel, but there's some more online forums that would do it. In any case, yeah, I don't know. I'm always for supporting Wizards of the Coast, but this particular book rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. In any case, yeah, um, let me know what you think down beneath in the comments section. Be sure to mention any thoughts, questions, comments, or concerns you have regarding it. Uh, as well as any cool stories or ideas or tidbits about Eberron you'd like to share with the rest of the community. And of course, if you'd like to gain access to a free one-shot, please feel free to do so over at the Guild Hall. Just click on which one you want, use code WELCOME, and it'll get sent to your email. Pretty good stuff overall. I've received nothing but positive um, feedback from the community, so I'm very grateful for that. That being said, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and as always, happy adventuring.